Well, you got Buddy Morris and James the Thinker Smith. Buddy Morris is one of the first strength coaches ever. A lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom. And he and I, from a personality standpoint, he's we're, we're identical. Um, and like, he'd walk in, he'd look at me like, I, 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 not today, motherfucker. I said, don't motherfucker, <laughs> motherfucker. You know, like, so I fucking loved him. I, I, I still do. He's, I, his personality wise, like it's, I, I really, I, I mean, for two years, I cut the sleeves off all my fucking shirts, you know, like I really, I really got it. Like me and him, like it was, it was, and he also from like a knowledge standpoint, like I, I pretty much just said that I have a man crush on Buddy Morris on the podcast, so I might as well just outright say it. Um, but from a training standpoint too, it was always he was always learning, you know. He was sitting at the computer, learning something when he figured out how to turn on the computer. So I, it was it was great being in the environment with him and with James Smith. Ah, oh, James is the thinker was just light years ahead of everyone. The way he thought. His ability to critically, critically problem solve and just simplify everything, it made it so, and he's, he's just so fucking smart and so knowledgeable. The guy's just an encyclopedia. I mean, he, he literally used to edit the encyclopedia of training, like Berkashansky super training, like he was one of the editors. So, I mean, there's no one, no one better than him, in my opinion, and he's not even in the industry. So like to... To be a part of that crew, I, I and I, I woke up at 5 a.m. I, I slept on this shitty air mattress in like a closet, and I, I woke up at 5 a.m. and sprinted over to the facility, as you know, as frequently as I could. And it, I, I just and I didn't leave. I didn't leave the facility sometimes until you know eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, whatever it was. Whenever we had sessions, I was there. I tried to be there as much as possible. I just, I loved it. It was a learning environment, a coaching environment a friend environment. I, I just fucking loved it. Everything was great about it for me. I mean, you also, it feels like you've been blessed by whatever higher power anybody believes in with some of the names and people you've been around with DeFranco, Buddy, James, the Thinker Smith, and you and Cam, did you guys ever cross over, but you were just at the same place? Cause we had Cam Joss on an episode earlier too. Yeah. So Cam was our intern. Right. So like... I, I used to, I used to train Cam. Cam started in high school with us uh, and he was fucking yoked. Always, always fucking you. Uh, tremendous power, powerful athlete. Um, so he was not my first guinea pig per se, but he was one of the first guys. Because I mean, Joe and I have different philosophies. And that started from Pitt. I was originally like a 100% DeFranco guy. And, you know, Joe was walking on water. And then I met Buddy and James. And I'm like, oh shit, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I learned a fuck ton of stuff. And then I started trans transitioning over to that path. And so, I mean, both Cam and I came from the same place and yet we both do something completely different from what is what, what goes on at DeFranco's. Um, <clears throat> and, but, I mean, it was a starting off point sort of thing, you know? So when I had first, not first started taking off at DeFranco's, but really building a name for myself uh, Cam was originally with Joe, and then he kind of transitioned over to me to do a lot of the working stuff, to do a lot of training, and we did a lot of top speed work. Uh, there was a year um, that Cam had like a, a five, a low five squat, I think, or maybe a high four squat. I, I forget what it was. And we didn't squat above 315 all off season, and we just did a ton of sprint work, ton of uh, low intensity squats like or not a ton a handful of low intensity squats and his squat pr by like 50 pounds that year and after that cam was like fuck there's there's more to this than what we were doing and we and we didn't do a lot of speed work at the franco's originally we didn't have the space so i used to take guys to fields and stuff so uh cam was like one of my one of my first uh gu guinea pigs maybe i don't know but like i i, I had him I had him when he was, I think, a freshman or a sophomore in college. And, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's now with Aaron Wellman, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know Aaron, right? I love Aaron. So how did you know him? Um, the, the, one of the athletic trainers for the New York Giants is Steve Canelli. Steve Canelli's from Oakland. Uh, his son 
was Ryan Canelli, who's now a physical therapist, uh, was a high school kid going into college, or maybe he was in college already, <clears throat> and he had some issues, some ankle issues, some hip issues, some whatever. And his dad had heard of me training people at DeFranco's because you know I had I had a handful of pro guys at that time. So I ended up training Steve Canelli's son. And Steve and I got real close. And he ended up working at Freak Strength for a little bit, um, like part-time stuff, because he's a full-time athletic trainer, but he, he likes training people. So he, he trained people out of Freak Strength. So when Wellman first came on, uh, he hit me up. He goes, yo, listen, there's this guy, Aaron Wellman. He is sharp. Let me connect the dots. You're going to love him. And sure as shit, I fucking loved it. Like I, I, Wellman, <laughs> Wellman's another dude I would, I would take a pay cut to work for, you know? Like wow. He, wow. Yeah, he's... He's as sharp as it gets. The, the accountability that the standard that he holds people to, I mean, he's, I, I really, really like him. And he's, I think in collegiate strength conditioning, I don't, I, I don't know that there's a better one, a, a better strength conditioning coach in college than Aaron Mullen. You know, you teed that up for me. What does constitute a good strength and conditioning coach in your opinion? <clears throat> so the accountability is huge right? That's, that's what strength coaches are known for in college strength conditioning. Like we're, we're the, you know, get on the fucking line sort of guys. And I'm not that like, that's, that's never been my forte. I'm a player's coach. That's why I, I get along very, very well with pros and with high school kids. It's, they listen to me because they're afraid of me, but if they're not afraid of me, like they, they want to challenge a lot. And, and most of them respect me enough not to, but it's, you need to have that type a mentality to be successful and to be good in to be a good fit in the college setting uh from an administrative standpoint they care about that yeah. guys standing on lines doing the stupid clap bullshit whatever the fuck like stuff like that matters to certain people that matter in whether or not you keep your job wellman does a fantastic job of that without being a hard up um from a knowledge standpoint, he's working on his second PhD. What? My you know, God. He's, he's an animal. He is, the, his thirst for knowledge is second to none. It's never enough. He's always learning. And he wanted, he wanted to get a, uh, a degree in Eastern medicine until I talked him out of it. Why did you talk him out of it? You did the, the acupuncture stuff. Yeah, I have I have my master's in in acupuncture, and I'm working on my doctorate in acupuncture. And my you know, I, for his for his purposes, it's not. I I said, don't worry about that. Do some other shit because I could teach you. <laughs> I could teach you all you need to know about the acupuncture without you having to spend all the time, you know, in in the weeds with it because it's not as applicable. The, the depths in which he would have to go to get the degree and to get the knowledge like i can give him in a in a more abbreviated time gotcha. um so like it, and and on top of it he's not afraid to try new stuff right the guy's already an encyclopedia knows everyone knows a ton of shit and yet he has his ego is non-existent enough to the point where he's not afraid to put what he knows to the side and challenge some of his own thoughts. Wow. Like he, he and I had talked, <clears throat> uh, I think like last year or the year before, I'm, I'm so bad with keeping up with people. And he had said that they were changing the running mechanics with guys and that it was increasing. Cam probably talked about the, the, the way that they were having guys run. Yep. And they, they amended some of the mechanics. And I, I had said to him, I said, oh, did you have a lot of injuries last year? He goes, no. This is what the fuck you changing it for. So in my opinion, I'm of the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he's, well, I'm still trying to learn more. We're increasing force output. I said, well, are you decreasing injuries? He goes, we'll find out. And this seems to be a more optimal way, you know, increasing impulse, decreasing force output, but increasing impulse or whatever the fuck, you know, like I, he's willing to try, he's willing to listen. And if it makes sense, he'll deviate from the norm. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.